Oh, très magnifique. Napoléon et moi, nous sommes les amis d'Astérix. Astérix, le Gaulois. Okay, what is going on, everyone? And I have some recent graphic novel acquisitions to show you today. And first of all, I do apologize. I'm still a little bit under the weather. This virulent wretchedness, this flu and, and cold that I've sort of been battling here for what seems like several weeks now. So, um, yeah, I, I do apologize for that. But, uh, yeah always does make you feel a little bit better when you go shopping to acquire, purchase some things that you enjoy. So let's get to it. The spread. And actually, um, of these 14 books, 13 were purchased at Barnes & Noble. The only one that was not is this one right here. And this is the original uh, Larry Hama, Michael Golden, Bucky O'Hare comic. It's quite, <laughs> this cute little fella. It's quite a compact one in terms of its overall size. Um, yeah. Just kind of flip through. Gosh, you know, I love Bucky O'Hare comics, cartoons, the video games. I own the NES game. I've had that for many years since uh, way back in the day and uh, have the arcade board as well. And I uh, absolutely just love the entire universe. Uh, just so inventive, so creative. The universe, all the different characters contained within. But yeah, actually I purchased this one uh, online. Good old Dead Eye Duck, Blinky, Willie Do It. Just indignation. But yeah, I don't want to show you the whole thing. I mean, you, you know, if you'd like to purchase this, I do recommend doing so. A fantastic little collection. Um, contains the entire original series, um, as well as some uh, new content, new material. So this is basically covers uh, all of the bases, everything. Uh, fantastic one. And so now on to all the other stuff that I purchased at Barnes & Noble. I am a member there, so I do get some good discounts. And um, especially this time of year, a lot of stuff is... They're always running sales there, so you never pay full cover price for anything. The uh, MSRP, whatever is listed on the back, is always a bit cheaper. Check this out. Godzilla Kingdom of Monsters. And... Another one that collects, uh, this graphic novel collects the entire, run the entire series. Look at the spine. I kind of hate it when people review books and they don't show you the spine, because you're going to want to put these up on your shelf to look nice and have in your collection of books. So that's always nice to see how they will look when you display them. <clears throat> Beautiful stuff. And a little, uh. 1954-2019, of course we're in the, uh, currently in the 65 year anniversary, so a lot of cool toys and books and different movie collections coming out, and they're running, uh, you know, if you have like TMC, different movie channels, uh, they've been running a lot of the old movies, so good to get reacquainted with those, watch them again, some of them I have not seen in a really long time, so I've enjoyed that, um, and... This one is uh, full color and absolutely beautiful. Trade paperback. And again, just pretty awesome. Mosfa Radon. Yeah, absolutely fantastic stuff. Beautiful. Uh, definitely one that I recommend. spoil too much of anything in here, just a brief kind of flip through so you can kind of get an idea of uh, what it actually looks like, so. All right. So, uh, I was really actually 
Um, this one is this one's quite cool. So this is a uh, 30th anniversary uh, Aliens, uh, the original comic series. Not taking this out of the shrink wrap yet. Just purchased these today, so. And uh, a really cool thing about this one, this is Dark Horse. Um, so uh, this is this collects um, kind of the story that occurred between the uh, 1986 uh, Aliens film and then that god awful, just mess of a movie. Uh, Alien 3, which I don't think anyone is fond of. I'm certainly not. <laughs> and then Alien Resurrection, of course, subsequently was... Ah, jeez, what... Just what garbage. Probably even worse than the third installment. Uh, I don't know what to say. So, yeah, this is really cool. It's kind of like a untold, untold story um, uh, between the second movie, which is, of course, great, and the third, which is not very good at all. And, you know, actually... For me, uh, I really do, perhaps my favorite film of all time, one of my favorite movies ever is the 1979 Alien, the first one. Now, uh, typically I think most people probably enjoy the general consensus is that people like the second one better. And it's more of kind of like a, a typical mid-80s, uh, you know, gun-toting, you know, big tough army men, testosterone-loaded, um, you know, action, uh, violence fest, and it's a great film, I mean, don't get me wrong, but um, <clears throat> I think the first one, like I said, one of my favorite movies of all time, just a, a, a bit more sophisticated, uh, that film, it's sort of like a horror, suspense, thriller, all wrapped into one, I mean, that's a terrifying movie, I think, that, that movie will still give me chills, just the soundtrack in it, and just like the, I don't know, the, the the general themes presented in that one um i just i really really love that movie <laughs> what can i say uh just whenever i play i don't know just kind of a and i'm rambling here but whenever i play like doom doom 64 for instance kind of uh, that's a pretty terrifying game as well just the the soundtrack in it and it sort of gives you uh for me it has that vibe that was presented in the original Alien movie, like just a, a masterpiece, you know. In, in Doom 64, there's some, some really kind of like startling, you know, bone-chilling music that uh, you'll, you'll just kind of be, it's real ambient and dark and quiet and eerie and, you know, you'll just hear these kind of odd, discordant sounds noises in the background and they'll kind of rise to a crescendo and just become blaringly loud and intense and uh it'll really it really raises the hair on the back of your neck and uh always like for me the music and just kind of just the general overall feel of that first alien film uh i think it's uh, i'm not a big horror movie fan you know and uh, you know a lot of uh, pretty base stuff just some crazy mad fucking demented psychos running around stabbing people. I don't find that, uh, I, that's not scary to me. It's just kind of stupid, generally, usually. But, you know, suspenseful thrillers, a sci-fi movie, like the original Alien, uh, gosh, I don't know, I'm, I'm rambling on about it too much. I really do love it. But um, for me, that's true horror. That's a, that's, a, that's a pretty frightening, it's a terrifying movie. Uh, just because it's so intelligently directed, just a really sophisticated film, um, and that kind of I don't know ties into it really like brings out human emotion and and, and fear and just uh, kind of a visceral feel. So yeah, what was I talking about? I love the first <laughs> Alien movie; it's the best. The second one's awesome too. I'm really excited to read this. This is it's black and white, so it's uh, a kind of like a comic. Uh, the, the telling of uh, the events that occur between the, the second movie, which was awesome, and the third one, which was terrible. Mm. Pardon me, I had to go blow my nose. Lovely stuff. It's fantastic to have a cold, is it not? But that was really, wasn't expecting to see this, so very excited. This is uh, Asterix Omnibus. So Asterix Le Gaulois, the pride of France. And uh, just a, uh, you know, people. In Western Europe, in the uh, UK, the British Isles, uh, France, obviously, Spain, Italy. You're very well familiar with this. Uh, over in North America, it's not quite as popular, but I, I do love it. And um, 
Um, if you know me, I have the uh, original Konami Asterix beat em up arcade board. It's a fantastic game. It tells the story of Asterix and Obelix. And if you're uh, if you're not really familiar with the series, um, it's kind of takes place in um, ancient Europe, uh, where at the time you know uh, France was the uh, province, Roman province of Gaul. And um, Asterix and Obelisk, just uh, two kind of Gaulish uh, warriors leading kind of a resistance movement against the Roman Empire. And it's great, man. It's just, it's hilarious stuff and sort of a, a parody of uh, various places throughout the European continent in antiquity. And <laughs> it's fantastic. And the artwork, just fabulous stuff as well. Beautiful spine to it. Here it tells a little bit about it, and so you can see it's in uh, British uh, pounds there, fourteen ninety nine UK only. But we have a North American price tag, so it was uh, I guess uh, legally imported. <laughs> Barnes and Noble is selling it. Lovely, lovely stuff. Um, so let's see, it's uh, books one, two, and three. Love uh, omnibus. Um, and just I'll, I'll just give you a little brief look at the artwork. Uh, people, um, you know, in Europe, you're well familiar with these cartoons, movies, and comics. But in North America, I think maybe probably a lot of people got a, their first kind of uh, taste for this with that Konami beat 'em up game, and uh, it is a fantastic one, a very expensive one. I'm glad I picked it up when you could actually find it back eight years ago, and it wasn't very expensive. But. Uh, just lovely stuff. Okay, so, you know, this is still a shrink wrap, haven't opened it up. Uh, love this, Stan Sakai. Uh, Usagi Yojimbo, 35 years of covers. And this one's huge, hardcover, oversized, just beautiful stuff. Dark Horse, there's the uh, spine for it. A little look at the back. And, uh, yeah. So, I mean, I love, obviously, the kind of like the original gold standard for comics. 35th anniversary. Um... Uh, in uh, America, well, created here, basically, and throughout the world, everybody loves Marvel and DC, right? I've never been a big DC fan, I don't know much about it, but I do love Marvel, and I have a pretty huge collection of uh, uh, Masterworks and Omnibus, just graphic novels, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's the well-known stuff, but I really think, um, I, I really love uh, the original Ninja Turtles, the uh, Laird and Eastman stuff, and uh, Stan Sakai, as well so like other than like the jack kirby uh stanley just classic stuff i think the, these are two american treasures in terms of uh just comic artists and storytellers with uh, uh laird and eastman with turtles and uh sakai with uh yojimbo and they there's a lot of crossover i actually do have a, a graphic novel that collects all of the crossover stuff between sakai um eastman and laird as well so, and, uh, this will be really cool to just open up and peruse, flip through. And so, it's the rest of the stuff I picked up. Uh, the nostalgic stuff in here. I'll pick these first. These are huge. Look at these oversized trade paperbacks. Look at the spine on that. That's beautiful. Kodansha. Of course, like um, English translations. Here's uh, Akira. Uh, books one and two. I think there are six in all total in a traditional black and white kind of manga format. And uh, obviously the first movie, uh, the Akira movie, pretty nostalgic stuff for me. I think probably a lot of people out there are bigger fans of it than I am. I, I like it and I appreciate it for what it is. Um, kind of, I don't know, uh, like film noir type cyberpunk-esque stuff which I, I love you know i love the masamune shiro stuff even a lot better really but um and i'm not i like akira but i'm not the just biggest fan of it of all time 
But, um, you know, in that film, there's only so much you can kind of showcase in, like, a, it was a pretty long one, two and a half hours, if I recall. I used to have the VHS tape. I don't think I have it anymore. But um, I'm sure you can expand upon it, you know, a lot more with uh, in a graphic novel, you know, manga, comic book format. So uh, it would be pretty interesting to kind of revisit the whole Akira universe and the weirdness <laughs> contained within. And uh, two beautiful looking books will look nice on the shelf. And I'm actually pretty excited to kind of uh, read these and kind of reacquaint myself with all of that. Um, to these, I got a bunch of Simpsons stuff here, which I'm really excited about. But check this out, dude. This is, look at this behemoth, beastly monster. And the spine is beautiful. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe mini comic collection. Look at that, Dark Horse. So, um, yeah, something near and dear to my heart from the 80s and childhood. I've kind of, like, I kind of, for many years, fell out of love with the whole series. But I've been kind of collecting the the more modern um, Mattel figures uh, recently. And I uh, love that Grand Amir. I did a review on it. I've got it up on my shelf with uh, the big uh, two-foot monster. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as, as you'll recall, back in the 80s, the original run of figures, they all kind of included within the packaging were these mini comics. So this actually collects every single one. <laughs> and then some. Um, there was kind of also... Marvel and DC actually did uh, kind of separate runs of uh, a different series of uh, uh, just uh, He-Man comics. So all of the mini comics in here, plus uh, I'm pretty sure all of that uh, Marvel and DC published stuff is all included within this just beastly, gargantuan monster. I don't even know how many pages. It's got to be like eight, nine hundred. Um, so and just check out that doesn't that just that's so nostalgic beautiful stuff okay so moving right along this uh pickups video is chock full of simpsons stuff here and i, I apologize like i said it's late saturday night I'm staying up late doing this video for all the fans i hope somebody enjoys it at least and watch it watches it but yeah, sorry if the camera's shaky here for, i'm holding it i'm i got a cold it's cold in here <laughs> I was still under the weather and I'm tired, but I wanted to make this video, so. Uh, but these, these are amazing. Um, a little backstory, I was a huge fan back in the day as a kid of the uh, Bongo comics series, uh, The Simpsons, and uh, these colossal compendiums, kind of a funny name as they're not so colossally large, as you can tell. But um, I do believe it collects a bunch of the stuff from that run and maybe some uh, new original content as well. So, open at them. That's uh, very cool stuff. And, uh, here's volume two. The cool thing about these is there's seven in all total and uh, when you display them on your shelving unit, it kind of creates a little <laughs> focus. Focus? Well, it's not going to, but a little image of all the characters down by the side. Um, here's a four. So I, at the Barnes & Noble, there's about like 10 different Barnes & Nobles uh, in the city in which I reside. So it's always, I just love going to bookstores. I love brick and mortar. I especially love large bookstores. It's just fun to go and peruse. You could spend hours in there. Um, so uh, it's always, you can always find something at one of the many in my area, but uh, I wasn't able to get three at this particular location. So I'll have to go to one of the other ones. I'm sure they'll have it. What's up? Duffman. And here's a uh, five. The Kodos and Kang down there, that's pretty cool. Um, six. finally seven and I believe this completes the set of compendiums 
but uh, very cool stuff. Like I said, I'll have to go and track down um, volume three, which shouldn't be too incredibly difficult of a feat to accomplish, but it's hard to you know give you a good look at this with holding a camera being under the weather <laughs> and uh, just flipping through with one hand here but uh, see a little bit of it beautiful full color art and you know those original bongo comics pretty they were uh, pretty nostalgic for me. I've still got a bunch of them in an old shoe box somewhere, so. But awesome stuff. Um, so yeah, that's about it. This video is gonna be longer than I wanted to be. That typically happens. I got a lot of stuff to talk about when I do these. But, yeah, 14, 14 books in all total. So, time to put these up on the IKEA Kallax. And I've got so much stuff, my backlog, that I need to read through, but I will do that and I will enjoy doing so. so Alright, guys. I uh, hope at least someone enjoys watching this. So. <laughs> Thanks for checking out, and uh, I'll talk to you later.